You know what we did wrong in the first part of the series? We started with the boring stuff. I mean, I get it, this whole project is not super exciting, but we spent quite some time working on the backend, and ended up with basically nothing to show. So this time we will start with the frontend project, the part that the client will see when they type the URL in their browser. So let's get to it. For the client's side we will use Next.js framework, primarily because it's really easy to set up and it supports server-side rendering out of the box. And we really want SSR so that the website could be indexed by search engines. Creating a new Next.js project can be done with just a single command. Don't forget TypeScript. Then let's see what's inside. There already is an index page here. We can start the project to see how it looks like. We won't need any of that, so let's just delete the content and fix the title and the description. I'm also gonna remove home.module.css file and create another one near the components file. I like components and styles to be near each other. The next step is to create the header component with a logo and a symbol navigation. In this project we'll stick to CSS modules instead of styled components. It's a good practice to try different approaches and I also think that it's a recommended way to do styles by Next.js. So I'll make a new file for styles with a couple of classes and apply them in the component. Looks like we need to remove default list styling. Let's do it for the whole website in the global CSS file. Legend says that for every header that should be a footer. It's gonna be similar, a single component with some styles. You may have noticed that we use the same container class on both components, and we will actually use it in the future, so let's extract it in a separate component. If you want to use children as a parameter in TypeScript React, there is a handy props with children type. I also want the footer to be at the bottom, and that means to make our page to be full screen all the time. For that, I will just set its mean height to 100vh and make it a flex box so I could spread out its children. Then we can make our first section. Let's create a banner. It's just gonna be a picture with some text and a button. I already prepared the picture and I put it in the public folder. By the way, I got a bit tired typing a CSS module import all the time, so I made a custom snippet for myself. Here's how it looks. Now I can just type mcss and hit enter. The next section will be about us, it's really simple as well. Our styles can be a little bit copy pasty for now and the website is not responsive at all, but we'll worry about it a bit later. Then we'll make a section with a list of services with prices, we'll just fill it with some placeholder data for now. And before I forget, let's change the font to Poppins. For that we need to create a custom document file with the default document class you can find in the Next.js documentation and put the Google Fonts link in the head. So now it would be cool if we could fetch the services from the server and edit them in the admin panel. So let's go back to the server project. We will do the same thing we did for Barbers. First we need a new model for our services. Before we do it, I want to add new script to the package.json file. I do it when there is a command I use often, but always forget. This time it's prisoner commands to create and apply migrations. Now we're ready to create a new model. I'm gonna call it barber service, because just a service is a bit too generic as a word, and it's used too widely in programming. Notice that I used decimal for prices instead of float, and here's why. Let's go into the browser's console and add 0.1 to 0.2. We'll get 0.30000004. In short, that's because of how numbers are stored in binary. There is a lot of great articles online if you're curious. I'm just gonna say that with floats, 
there is often are very very small rounding errors and while usually it's fine we don't want them when working with money and the way decimals are stored we can be sure we won't have any after the model is done we can create a new migration check that the code is ok and apply it and now we can create a new controller first i want to add the command into the package.json as well then use it to create barber services controller it's gonna be very similar to the barber's controller first let's make a dto there is no built-in type for decimals in json and i don't want to convert them to floats so we will send them as strings instead next do dtos for creating and updating set prisma service as a dependency and make basic controller methods for getting creating and updating our new model Notice how we can just pass a string for the price into the create and update methods. Prism is smart enough to parse it into decimal. Now let's test it a bit. Create a couple of services and try to update one of them. Use the get method to see if they're saved properly. Now I'm gonna switch to the admin project and add a couple of pages for viewing and managing the barber services. The pages are gonna be almost the same as the barber's ones. We already have a services page here, but it's empty for now. Let's add a table with existing services. First, we need an API method and a query hook for fetching services. And then we can create a table component. We have a couple of styled elements that are the same on both pages. Let's extract them into separate components. Again, don't worry about putting everything in one place for now. It's not that hard to organize components in the folders once it starts to get messy. Then let's add a page with a form to create a new service. We also need an API method and a query hook. Here we can see that it works. And finally the update page. We will create API methods and query hooks for fetching a single service and updating it. Don't forget to invalidate queries on mutations. For example, when updating a service, we need to invalidate a general query for services and the one for this specific service. And then we'll make an actual page and a form. Looks good. Let's add a couple more services. We don't have validation at the moment, so we should be a bit careful with what we're typing. Remember these services. We'll have them on our client's website in no time. But before that, I want to do something really quick. We shouldn't worry too much about the design for now, but these links are unreadable. Let's change their color in the global CSS file. I'll set it to inherit instead of particular value, so the links will be the same color as the text around them. Yep, much better. Let's switch to the client project and open our index page. Remember, we need server-side rendering, so we can't just fetch data from the components. Thankfully, there is a special way to do this in Next.js. We need to define and export a special function called getServerSideProps. The function needs to return an object that will be passed as props into our homepage component. The most important part about this function that you need to know is that it will be executed on the server. So we don't have access to the user's data like local storage 
And if we do an HTTP request in this method, it's gonna come from the server as well, not from the user's browser. And that's exactly what we need, because we want to fetch all the data and put it into the HTML before sending it to the user or to the search engine scroller. Before we implement it, we need a way to actually fetch the data. Let's go ahead and install Axios, then create a separate file for our API calls with a function to get the services. Then we can fetch the services and get the site props function, pass the data into the home page, and then into the popular services component. We will list all the services here for now, we don't have that many. Let's check if it works. Amazing. So that's it for this video. I think we did a pretty good job and we're gonna continue in the next one. Thanks for watching guys.